Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. IBM is laying off thousands of employees and seeking flexibility during the COVID-19 crisis. Account stealing malware is making its rounds on Discord. A pizzeria owner in the U.S. has discovered and exploited a flaw in DoorDash's marketing scheme and makes money buying his own pizzas. Microsoft has fixed a critical vulnerability affecting all Windows versions since 1996. And unmanned drones will slash NHS delivery times to a remote Scottish hospital. Stick around, the full details are coming up. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. From the Newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Both Hewlett Packard Enterprise and IBM have announced significant cost-cutting measures, including pay cuts and significant job losses. The COVID-19 crisis is hitting almost every market sector hard, and now the dominoes are starting to fall. As other small, medium, and large businesses reduce operations or shutter for good, the tech firms that rely on enterprise clients are themselves taking heavy losses and laying off personnel. IBM announced its layoffs late Thursday. In a statement, the company said the highly competitive marketplace requires flexibility to constantly remix high-value skills, which in this case means deciding you no longer place a high value on the skills a significant number of employees bring to the socially distanced table. IBM, like many firms now facing cuts and layoffs, was not in the best of financial situations before COVID-19 hit. The company's CEO, Arvind Krishna, has been with the company for decades but only stepped into the top seat in April, saying at the time he was focused on building up the parts of the company that support cloud computing and artificial intelligence and was willing to move away from the rest. IBM did not specify how many positions were being cut, but both the Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg News report thousands of employees were affected in five states. California, New York, North Carolina, Missouri, and Pennsylvania. IBM said in a statement it would offer subsidized medical coverage to affected employees for the next 12 months. Hewlett Packard Enterprise also announced its cost-cutting plans on Thursday as part of its more recent quarterly earnings report. The company will cut some salaries through at least the end of October, with executives seeing pay cuts of between 20 to 25 percent. The company, like younger tech brethren such as Facebook and Twitter, says it will further save money by embracing remote work in the longer term, allowing it to shutter some offices. Researchers have found an updated version of Anarchy Grabber that steals victims' plain text passwords and infects victims' friends on Discord. Detected as Anarchy Grabber 3, the new Trojan variant modifies the, the Discord client's JavaScript core upon successful installation, and this modified version gives the malware the ability to load other JavaScript files. When the infected Discord client is opened, the threat loaded inject.js from a new uh, Anarchy folder. This file loaded another script called discordmod.js and the two scripts together logs the user out, at which point they are prompted to lock back in. The new Anarchy Grabber variant then attempts to disable two-factor authentication on its victim's account and steals information including their username, plain text password and user token, which it sends to the attacker's own Discord server by a webhook. The malware also attempts to spread itself to other Discord users by sending a message that contains the malware to everyone on the user's friend list. After modifying the Discord client, Anarchy Grabber doesn't run again, which makes it difficult for antivirus software to detect the threat since there are no malicious processes. It also ensures that a victim remains part of the botnet whenever they interact with Discord using the app. Robbie, how can a user determine if they're infected if antivirus can't detect it? Well, Becca, um, tech-savvy users can open the index.js file and then they can check the contents. So on Windows, you're going to find that in uh, its app data. Just wrap that in percent signs to get there really quickly and then you'll enter the Discord folder. Linux and Mac users go to the .config hidden folder in your home folder 
And within that, you'll find the Discord folder holding all the files. Now, on any architecture, the files in from there are going to be the same. So whether you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux, you'll note that, uh, that there are many, many files called index.js in the tree from that folder. Um, so the one that you're looking for is in um, discord underscore desktop underscore core. And the directory format is your Discord version. Now, in my case here on Windows, that's 0.0.306. So I enter that folder, then modules, then Discord underscore desktop underscore core. And I can check the contents of the index.js file. And if it contains anything other than a command to require core.sr, it's probably infected. Thanks, Robbie. If you suspect infection, uninstall the Discord app and reinstall, Change your password and ensure 2FA is re-enabled if it's been turned off. Whether Discord, email, Facebook, or otherwise, be diligent and ensure you only click links you know you can trust. Since malware like this spreads to friend lists, it's also important to remember that just because it's one of your trusted friends sending it doesn't mean you can automatically trust the links. A simple did you send this question could be all it takes to protect you, your account, and your privacy. The owner of a pizza restaurant in the U.S. has discovered the, the DoorDash delivery app has been selling his food cheaper than he does while still paying him full price for orders. A pizza for which he charged $24 was being advertised for $16 on DoorDash, and when he secretly ordered it himself, the app paid his restaurant the full $24 while charging him $16. So he ordered 10 pizzas, paid $160, and had them delivered to a friend's house. The restaurant was then paid $240 for the order by DoorDash. In further tests, the restaurant prepared his friend's order by boxing up the pizza base without any toppings, maximizing the profit from the mismatched prices. And it worked. Content strategist Ranjan Roy, who is a friend of the pizzeria owner, blogged about it. He said, I was genuinely curious if DoorDash would catch on, but they didn't. The curiosity stemmed from the fact that they had not asked to be put on the app, so it didn't make sense that the company would be selling their pizza at a loss. They later found out it was part of a cunning strategy to build customer demand and then use that demand to get the restaurant to sign up. Mr. Roy says, They have a test period where they scrape the restaurant's website and don't charge any fees to anyone, so they can ideally go to the restaurant with the positive order data to then get the restaurant signed on to the platform. Mr. Roy is of the opinion that it's bad business. He says you have insanely large pools of capital creating an incredibly inefficient money-losing business model. DoorDash is backed by investment giant SoftBank, which last week posted a record-breaking loss of nearly $13 billion. Thanks, Becca. We do have to take a really quick break, but when we come back, Becca's got more of your top tech news for the week, so stick around. Researchers have shown that a vulnerability in a decades-old Microsoft Windows component that controls printing could be abused by malicious actors to gain elevated privileges on the targeted system. The flaw, which they dubbed Print Demon, resides in the print spooler, and get this, it affects all Windows versions since NT 4.0. The component has remained largely unchanged since, even though another vulnerability affecting it was abused by the infamous Stuxnet a decade ago. Microsoft said of the fix, an elevation of privilege vulnerability exists when the Windows Print Spooler service improperly allows arbitrary writing to the file system. An attacker who successfully exploited this vulnerability could run arbitrary code with elevated system privileges. An attacker could then install programs, view, change, or delete data or create new accounts with full user rights. Microsoft played down the likelihood of exploitation, saying that an attacker would need to log on to an affected system and use a specially written script or application. But as we know, RDP exploits are occurring in the wild with malware such as Sarwent opening a remote access to Windows systems. So in today's connected world, saying a hacker needs to have access to a system in order to exploit it 
is an irresponsible point to make which could mislead inexperienced IT departments into complacency. The vulnerability can be abused to elevate privileges, bypass endpoint detection and response rules, and gain persistence. As part of this month's Patch Tuesday, which plugged a total of 111 security holes, Microsoft changed how the Windows Print Spooler component writes data to the file system, and it advised to download and apply the update. This exploit goes to show why running a version of, Win of Windows that is past end of life is unwise. The fix for this exploit will not be released to EOL operating systems such as Windows XP or even Windows 7, which will remain vulnerable to this critical flaw. Perhaps this is also another example of why it's high time to consider switching to Linux. Remote control drones will be used to deliver coronavirus testing kits to a remote Scottish hospital, and they're being flown outside of the operator's direct line of sight. Backed by the local NHS tri uh, trust, drone firm Skyports will fly drones between the Isle of Mull and Oban, the closest town on the Scottish mainland. We've reported on similar in, uh, recent trial programs, and it seems it's working as more communities begin tapping into the unmatched capabilities of UAVs. Uh, Skyport's chief exec, Duncan Walker, speaks about their recent trial in the Scottish area of Argyll and Butte, saying it provides an important short-term response to the current pandemic and lays the foundations from which to grow a permanent drone delivery operation across a network of healthcare facilities around the country. His company will fly unmanned delivery drones made by German company Wingcopter. The craft will fly the 17 kilometers between Lauren and Isles Hospital in Oban and Iona Community Hospital in Cragnier. While 17 kilometers doesn't sound like a long distance as the crow flies, it's a lengthy, arduous journey by road and ferry. By contrast, Skyport says it will take just 15 minutes by drone. The trial will take place using beyond visual line of sight rules requiring special permission from the Civil Aviation Authority. Drone flights that go beyond the operator's line of sight are normally prohibited. However, the main perceived benefit of aviation drones cannot be realized until the tech is proven safe enough to be, flo to be flown without a watchful human nearby in case of collisions. The trial will take place over the next two weeks, completing in the first week of June. Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV Newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And if you appreciate what we do, become a patron at patreon.com slash category5. From the Category 5.TV Newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson.